Today on The Grid, our topic is how do you know or how to know if you're progressing in your photography? Eric, the one and only real rocket man is in the house. We've got some absolutely awesome giveaways to some folks who are watching the show live and it's going to be a fun, fun day on The Grid today. And it all starts in just 23.2 seconds. Let's go! The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's good just, time. Just after 1 o'clock. <laughs> and welcome to The Grid. I'm Scott Kelby. Joining me, as always, my co-host and the only real rocket man, Mr. Eric Kuna. Well, hey, Scott. We haven't talked too much yet because uh, we just got in, but... We did. We just got in. We just got in. But uh, Dobson's on the set today. He's been here for days. <laughs> now we can't get rid yes. of him. He's we, just here. He's part we've of the been fabric. Doing, we've been doing a lot of filming lately. Yes, yes. we have. We've mm-hmm. been very, very busy. We've been a busy camp. Yep. And, uh, but we got cool. something huge coming up next month that we've been filming for. Yeah, yeah, we do. We got something huge coming up. We have the Photoshop World Conference coming up next month. There's a lot coming up. First, there's the Photoshop World Conference. It is, it is three days plus a pre-conference day of three tracks, a ton of great instructors. If you're into post-processing, and you really need to be into these days. <laughs> if you're a photographer, yes. you need to be in fo- to post- post-processing. Yes, 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 yes. And if you're watching this show, we know you are. But this is for you. This is a conference developed for you guys. Come and uh, join us. It is uh, three tracks, three days, plus the pre-conference day. And you can register right now and save a bunch of money. And you also get access to every single session, no matter what track it's in. So if you yep. miss one track, you always get access to every single session. For a full year, yep. which there is a go. long, a ridiculously long time. Anyway, there's pre-conference sessions. There's all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the classes I'm teaching. I got some fun classes that I'm teaching, mm-hmm. including I'm doing a whole session, ready, just on creating killer skies Mm -hmm. so it is not a session on sky replacement though of course i will do sky replacement but it's all on just skies so how to shoot them mostly about the post processing but well i'm I'm really excited i mean we have got tons of great classes oh we do we do you know there's been so many advancements in the last few years and to have a few days where we could just focus on getting up to speed with all that stuff is great we're looking forward to it All right, then, today, a new conference was announced, a brand new conference. It is the Art and Craft of Photography Conference. And look, I I gotta even have a graphic because look, I'm a, oh, I'm not plugged in, hold on, don't move. Yeah, ain't gonna work without the plug. Not gonna work without the plug. Let me open up actually a different graphic. Of course, we just got here right before, so. Yeah, I was was, uh, running a bit late, which is not unusual for me. I think it's my trademark, actually. Hang on one second. Where is, why won't my, uh, I can't, everything's stuck. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, I think you're locked up. Yeah, well, sometimes it's when you first plug in this thing. Just give it a second, it'll it'll wake back up. It really will. It's the Photoshop beta. It's the Photoshop beta. Let me try opening up that other one now. There there we go. All right, wait, wait, it it messed up. Oof, boof. Oh boy. Okay, this is it. Ready? Here we go. You can, if you can see my screen, you see my screen? Anybody? No. Yes. No, they don't. No? But it's all plugged in and everything. Well, you know, very, well, wait. We'll see it in a minute. Just wait. All right. Well, so we'll see it. We'll see it eventually. We'll, all right. Eventually. And I'll tell you about this new conference coming up in a minute. Uh, in other news, I'll tell you what conference has taken off. B&H Photo is doing this build conference in New York City. Yep. Now, we've, we, there's always been a conference in New York around this time of year. It was always Photo Plus East. And for the last couple of years, Photo Plus hasn't done their conference and they're not in that. I don't think they're in that market anymore. I'm, I'm not sure, but they've they stopped doing the conference. 
B and H photos going to the same place, the Javits Center, yep. doing their own conference. They s oversold the show floor so many people wanted ninety thousand square feet of exhibitors. They got a ton of classes. I'm doing a keynote there. Hey, you know uh, who's doing something at that conference? I, a Hil lot of people. <laughs> Hilmar was hired yep. by Nikon to, there do, you go. to set up. You know, she's mm -hmm. very famous for being in oh, Photoshop sets, World and setting yeah. up a set. So she's doing a set and running them for them. So anyway, the conference that's is awesome. It's not the depth of field conference. Don't show that picture. I think that's not, just on that's their not website. It. That's yeah. not it. It's the Build Conference, build but it was at the top. I think it's it Build Expo. It was at the top of their it's website. BuildExpo.com, I think is what it is. B-I-L-D. Anyway, they have huge sign-ups for it and stuff. It's coming up. It's like right after Photoshop World. There's Photoshop World, and then boom, it's right there. Yeah. So anyway, and I'll be flying up there for that. Oh, my, my screen's going. Okay, here we go. That's not my screen, but it's a nice looking screen. That's so that's the, the Build, build Expo, conference. September build 6th and 7th, Expo. up at the Javits Center in New York City. I was just in New York on a secret project. But uh, anyway, 13 days away. I've got to yep. go, between now and then, i got to leave for London. I go to London on Sunday. I you got, go, round trip. Yeah. I've got my, I have my travel workshop in London. I, I do that travel workshop. I fly home. I do Photoshop World, and I fly to New York, and I do that. Yep. It's, gonna be, it's been a busy... And then in November, you're and, doing something else. And then in November, I'm doing something else. On November 8th and 9th, I'm one of the instructors at the Art and Craft of Photography. So these are all authors from Rocky Nook. So Rocky Nook is the people that publish my photography books, and all these people write books for them. So they're all authors and instructors. And they're doing like a, a two-day online conference, November 8th and 9th, and I'm one of the one of the instructors. So look at that. There's Joe and Chris and Roberto and Lindsay Adler. And anyway, there so that go. is November 8th and 9th. So and I'm gonna give you the address here in just a second of where to go to learn about this conference. I have it, I do have it here. And the address, it's it's weird address. Because they, they can't. Uh oh, it's a weird address. It's not one of those. Can be like simple, or like a bit. Well, you here's what I would do. Go to well, it's events.rockynook.com. That's not that's so not bad. That's, that's not that's, too that's bad. That's not as bad as what I was seeing before. So it's events.rockynook.com, and that takes you to this this thing right here. So ten speakers, two days. It's very very lovely, and it's put on again by the folks that publish my books. So there you go. And there's me. There's me and my Peter Hurley headshot. <laughs> That's right. And that was only taken like two days ago. As far as nice. you know. All right, well, there, there we, we go. go. Okay. We got an interesting topic today. We right? do have an interesting now this topic, correct me if I'm wrong. This topic I will. came from <laughs> You have no problem with that, do you? Nope. It's a busy job, isn't it? It's like a full-time job. Yep. <laughs> this topic idea came from a, a, a one of our viewers last yep, week. Yep, it did. Asked this question, and right. on the break, <laughs> we looked at each other and said, that's a great topic. For and we wrote week. it down, and now we're doing it today. And our topic is how to know if you're progressing in your photography. Yep. How do you even know? And so that's what we're going to discuss today. Of course, we always want to take your comments and questions. We have a bunch of giveaways, as always. We're the show that gives away more stuff than anybody yep. live and every week. And speaking of, what are we giving away this week? We've got a Platypod gooseneck. Yeah, we do. So we're giving away a Platypod gooseneck over at Platypod. Um, this is a great attachment for your Platypods where you can add uh, lights, you can add um, attachments, anything you want to your Platypod that can mount to a gooseneck. There you go. And then we're going to be giving away a copy of the Adobe Photoshop for Digital, Digital Photographers book by Scott Kelby. So That's me, by the way. Yep, there's Scott. And um, we're also giving away another one of Scott's books. This is, we're going to be giving away the ebook version of How Do You Do That in Photoshop book uh, from Rocky Nook right up there. So there you go. And um, then we're going to be giving away a copy of On One No Noise 2023, great plugin for removing noise and adding sharpening to your photos. Uh, so there you go. And then we're going to be giving away one V flat from V flat World. This is going to be for U.S. shipping only. So only enter this if you're you know you got a U.S. shipping address. Um, everybody can get 
a discount though over there at V Flat World. All they got to do is fill, uh, use the code Kelby10 at checkout to save 10% over at vflatworld.com. We're also going to give away a retouch for me. Um, is giving away the eye bundle. So this is the eye vessels and eye brilliance. So this is all about retouching the eyes, right? And but you know that's such an important thing. It is such an important thing. I mean, when it comes to portrait, it's well, yeah, it's not, wildlife portrait. Anything. It's not really important it, for travel photography. No, it's not anything super important for with product photography. Anything with eyes, it is important. Yeah, there you yes. go. So there we go. Rocket photography is very low. Yeah. Well, unless there's a, I don't know, an astronaut a with a big eye on the side of the plane, the plane. a big iris. Yeah. So, but everybody can get 20% off of um, the Retrust for Me plugins. So all you got to do is go over to this address. It's one where you have to kind of write it down. It's promo dot retouch four, and that's the number four dot M E. So promo dot retouch number four dot M E. So there you go. Enter the code Kelby. 120, so that's K-L-B-Y-O-N-E, 20. You know who's got really big irises? Dogs. Oh, yeah. They have very little sclera. Or mattering, yeah. And giant eyes, which is yes. why dogs are, another reason why dogs are so awesome and so attractive, right? They have big, like, Disney eyes. Yes, okay. they do. Our topic today, how do you know if you are progressing on your photography? I wish what we knew the person's name that asked that question. I wish so we did, but we had wiped it out. If you were watching and you, it was you, just pop us a note in this so we well, can Well, I think the reason we, we said that on the break is we're like, that's a question we get a lot, right? Yeah, and, and it's not a, a topic. answer it in one sentence kind of thing. No, and we actually have a whole company that is dedicated to making sure that you're doing just this. Yes. Right? That's the whole this reason is, we do this, this podcast. This is true. <laughs> so while this... This is a little bit, and as we go through here, there's going to be stuff that we're going to talk about that we do. This is why we do what we do. We do what we do to make photographers better. Yeah. So we're progressing with our images. We're just the, the, that's why we're in business, right? right? That's why we exist. Now, but this is about you evaluating yourself. Like we are one of the tools you can use, right? I think yes. education yes. It's very important to getting yes. better at anything. anything. Not just photography, but better at anything. We yes. just happen to be have a company that's focused on photography and post-processing and that that's our, our gig. But let's talk about really quick. Now, I, I'm gonna tell you what my first point is. We have numerous points. Yes, but we I wrote them down you, so we can kind of go through them and not forget any. I wanna warn you about my, my, you have heard me say this before. You've heard me say this many times, but in the context of what we're doing today, my step one would be this, because this is a very tough question to say, how do I know if I'm getting better? So what I would ask you is, how can you measure yourself? Like, how do you know where you're getting better? We have a way that will help you to be able to know today if you're better than you were. And it sets you up for the immediate future to find out if you're better. And that is doing something that people really resist doing and I'm going to give you a, a little option here that might, might help. <laughs> Number one, go flipping create a portfolio of your work. When you are forced to look at your best images, 24 of your best images, when you have collected your 24, you're going to have a baseline for where you are as a photographer. You're going to have an idea of like, okay, this is, this is where I am. This is where it now. I'm going to tell you this, if you go, yeah, I wanted to do that, but I don't know how. One of the classes, I'm not trying to pitch my class at Photoshop World, but I'm doing a class on how to create your portfolio using something you're already paying for. So included in your Adobe photography bundle or whatever yep. bundle that you have, whatever Adobe subscription you have, it's included. There's a thing called Adobe portfolio. There are templates and you just go and create your thing. It, it is. I don't want to say it's tricky, but I'm saying if you watch my class, it will be very helpful. Yeah, it will once really you get helpful. by the little gitch gotchas. There's the little you know, gotchas in it. it. Like there's some UI things that Adobe could have done a lot, lot, lot better. But when you're done, it looks fantastic. It's hosted for free. You, and, and you can choose from all different templates. It's and, optimized. It's and optimized for mobile. if you have mobile, somebody walking you through it stuff. like me, right, you'll have no problem. You can set it up in one hour. In one hour... But, but, but it's bigger than just having a portfolio. And by the way, 
when you create this, you don't have to show anybody. You don't have to post it online. You know, but it's the act of, I, of yeah, finding your saying. best photos. Yeah. You never have to hit the publish button. Or you can hit the publish button and uncheck the box that says make it public. You don't have to let anybody see it. But this is something you need to do. Because here's what, so many photographers, they shoot all kinds of different stuff. They have thousands of images, thousands and thousands and thousands on their computer. And they have no idea what their best ones are. Mm -hmm. And if you say, send me your 10 best photos, they're completely stymied. They have no idea what their 10 best photos are. Like I can go find my photos immediately. I have a portfolio, I know exactly yep. what they are. But let me tell you why the portfolio thing works in the, in the big picture. Is number one, it forces you first to take a look at your work. And you're going to have an idea of if you're progressing or not. If you look at your images and you go, crap, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. That's good. But this is your baseline because now you're going to, now that you have a baseline, then you can see how you progress. How do you know if you progress? Ready? If you take a, a shot that's so good that it's better than one of the shots you have in your portfolio, you replace that, right? So the idea is I put up my best 24 shots and then the next year I'm trying to shoot shots that are better than that. Mm -hmm. And every time I shoot a better one, I'm going to replace one. If you get to the end of a year and you've never replaced a shot in your portfolio, you're not really progressing with your photography. So what this whole portfolio thing does is it really does give you a first, an idea of where you are now. It sets you up for the next year so you can see how you're doing. And it gives you a very measurable thing where can, you can see, I replaced six photos this year. That's pretty good. 25% of my portfolio or whatever got upgraded. That's pretty good. You have a year where you replace six photos, that's a hell of a year. And who was it? Was it I believe it was Ansel Adams yeah. that said, and I could get you the exact quote, but I think he said like, six great photos that you take in any year is a really good take. Six. Yeah. So one every two months. If you can take a photo every two months that's better than your best, man, that's really, really saying something. And, and just leave it to 24 photos. Now, if you only do 20, that's fine, but don't go to 36 or any of that crap. These are not your, no, it's not 12 of your best photos and then 24 of your second best and then 16 of your third best. Just your best photos, 24 of them. Come watch my class at Photoshop where I'll take you through it. Oh, and if you're a Kelby One member, I do already have a class on, on, on the, my portfolio thing. It's just, I did it a few years ago. So this yeah. one's the latest version and it's all new. And but also at the same time, we also have on Kelby One classes that'll help you out with this as well. Cause we have like a, you know, a photo editor that's talking about how to oh, select your images. Oh, she's so right? good. So there's this process of knowing, cause I know that this is a problem that we all have is we don't know what our best photos are. So being able to know what your best photos are, are uh, that's a skill in itself, right? Right, and we have, I think it's two different classes. Two different classes. Shot on location in New York with a photo editor from major magazines who really tells you how to sequence your portfolio, like what photo goes first, what photo goes next, why they go in a different order. Oh, oh, Stella, her name's Stella. Yeah, Stella. People love Stella's, her classes were so good online that we brought her to Photoshop World and she did classes for us there. And she's just a lovely person. Mm -hmm. And she, but you know what I love about Stella? She's very New York. <laughs> yeah. Stella tells it like it is. Your stuff's crap, honey. It's crap. No, it's not like that. But anyway. But, but so, she does tell it like it is. Yes. And that is an important part of the process. Now, I know that I rambled on quite a bit about that. And I know I've talked about it before. But I think it's so important. I think it's, it's my step one. If you were like my personal friend and we're hanging out, we're just buddies. And I know that some of you actually watching are yeah. there, my friends, but, but, uh, and we were sitting at the bar having a drink and you're like, I don't know where my, you know, I would say, all right, where's your portfolio. If you said you didn't have one, I'd go, let's start there. Start there. Now right. we got a lot more to cover and we're going to cover those right after this quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And we're going to dig deeper into how to see if your photography, how to tell if your photography is getting better. Don't go yep. away. It's like a broken record on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm Amanda Lucian, your posing coach. Come join me in my latest Ultimate Posing Guide. In this class, you'll be able to learn everything about posing like pose your feet, your legs, your arms and hands, pose your whole body from head to toe, and also understand and learn how to facial expression and body expression. You learn how to pose with props on the chair, sitting on the floor, lying on the floor. Can you imagine? And you will learn the foundation and advanced pose as well. Are you ready for this? So join me in my latest class on kelbyone.com. How do you create a sense of timelessness and romance and intrigue when you do your travel photos? Wouldn't it be great if you came back with these photos that literally take the viewer away, where they look at the photos and they're like, where, where's that? I want to go there. You've seen that type of travel image where all of a sudden you're just like, you're taken away. And what it is, I think, one of the big things is the sense of timelessness. It's where you compose the shots, and it's not just when composing, it's what you do in camera and what you do in post-processing that makes all the difference in the world. Well, we just created this course here in beautiful Portugal where we show you how to create that timelessness. And what we do is we're traveling all over the city to show you again and again and again, here's how to create that, that timeless look that doesn't look modern, that doesn't pull you out of the romance and the, and the passion of the scene, and, and it lets you tell a story, a timeless story. It's gonna be that thing that helps you elevate your images to the next level, and we've done an entire course just on that. We're all over walking everywhere, we're going across the river, we're showing you all kinds of different scenarios, but it's not just what we do in camera, it's what we do in camera and what we do in post-processing. So come watch my brand new class on creating timeless travel images, and it's exclusively at kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're back. All right. Um, hey, I need. I How do we tell if our work is progressing? Well, one on the jib. If, if it's pointing to the ground, it's, it's, to the ground, it's, it's not, not a good idea. All right. Dobson, your jib work is not progressing. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I need some help. Before we get back to the topic, I need some help next week. So I'm leaving Sunday for London, and then my workshop runs next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So not this week, a week from now. I need some help. I need somebody in London to help me on a shoot. So I have this really cool shoot plan, but I need, I need help. It, you don't have to be a great photographer or anything like that. I just need help, and it's a very specific help I need. If you're in London and you've got nothing to do next Thursday, a week from Thursday, I think it is. I, have to, I, I think it's a week from Thursday. I promise you'll have fun. It will be a, yeah, that's me. That's not me. That's my site. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you'll have fun. You'll have fun. I promise. And it, it, there will be a very cool thing in it. But anyway, I just need some help. If you're in London and you got nothing to do next third, a week from Thursday. How should they contact? You? Drop me a note in the, in the thing yeah. and I'll contact you. Yeah. Drop us a note. Next Let Thursday afternoon. It's an afternoon thing. I'm in London. I can do that. Yeah. So just that, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I know what it is. It's going to be really cool. He knows. <laughs> he knows. It's awesome. It is awesome. It's totally awesome. All right. I'm going to turn things over to Mr. K 
for his. I've already. I I beat my thing to death. Well, I got a. I got. We got a few of them here. Yeah, we no, we have. We here. made a list. Yeah, we made a list. We're checking uh, it twice. So you know, one of the things that we had on the list next um, is uh, analyzing composition, right? A big thing when you're starting out uh, and seeing if your photography is getting better is looking at your fo uh, older photos. And this is going to pl uh, play right into what Scott's talking about. That's why you have to have your older and your newer photos. You go through and you select what your, what your best photos are. And then you start analyzing composition to see, is my co are my compositions getting stronger? You should see, over time, your eye developing. If you're not seeing, if all your photos are looking the same and you're like, oh, my work's not getting any better. And then also in composition, if you're going into the software and you're hitting select subject and it can never find your subject, <coughs> it can never find or it anything. Just some random it just thing. pick some random thing. Like something is happening with your techniques and your composition that now we need to focus on things to get better are things like rules. And are things like techniques. All right. Hey, Eric, it's not getting better. I hate to do this. Yep. Can I plug one of my classes? Uh, no, I would actually have plugged one of your classes at this point. So go okay, ahead. You, I'll let you no, plug No, no, no. Go no, ahead. It's better if you do it. You know, I, there, Scott has a great class called Crush the Composition. That's right? not the class I was going to but this is, this do is, that one. This do is a great one. class. Do oh, that. I, we, could, we could talk about about 100 classes on Kelby no, 1. No, but do that one. On this topic. I'll do a different one. But there's a great class that Scott teaches on this about crushing the composition. And it's about how he looks at his own work. And I, because I do the same thing. We look at our own work and we see that as we move through a scene, how compositions change. And you want to do that to progress in your work. That's why when you start out, you shoot a million, million shots. And you're trying all these. And that's fine that you're shooting a million shots in the beginning. But when you start getting good, you start iterating less shots, less shots, less shots. And then you can get to the point where you can just walk up and you know where the good composition is. That's where, like landscape photography, I'll say that's what Ram Rampton, or when I'm not shooting with Rammy. Rampton. He has a gift for seeing the composition before he even shoots. Like, oh yeah, he knows gift. what he's going yeah. to get. Yeah, and that's what you have to get to. You want to get to that point. You want to get to the point where you just know what the composition is. But Doing that process, going through, fi figuring out, is there a clear way, it's uh, a clear um, thing in your frame, that whole thing about knowing there is a subject. Um, and then also the other thing is, uh, look for which rules that you used. You know, another thing like, um, you know, over in, um, what is it, over here in like say, oh, what am I doing here? Oh, I don't even know if I'm plugged in actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. You are? All right, I am? Yes. All right, another thing would be over here, inside of, um, inside of a Lightroom, or, Lightroom, or, or, yeah, Lightroom or Photoshop, you can hit the O, when you help bring up a crop tool, uh, you can hit this O key, right? Oh. And that O is going to bring up all the different, most of the different compositional rules. Yeah, the golden triangle, And you're going to see them. Look through your photos and see, does stuff, does stuff jive? And then if you don't know these rules, figure out what these rules are, because that's going to help you get better at your photography. All, All right. right. I, have, I have other classes to plug. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't no. trying to make this a pluggy thing, but well, I did a class. Called, we're not plugging them. We're just telling you things not, that know, we're trying to help you. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Here's what I thought you were going to say. Yes. I did a class called How to Critique Your Own Work. And a lot of it was <laughs> about the one technical too. compositions. It was a lot of it was about getting the technical stuff out of the way. Now you have to understand, you can get every technical thing perfectly exactly right, and this, this, this can still be a soulless, lifeless photo, but technically correct. But what I did was I went through all these different genres of photography. I gave you things to look out for each mm -hmm. one of them. Here's how to critique your portrait photo. Here's how to critique your landscape. Here's how to critique your travel, your sports, whatever. And then I gave you downloadable checklists that you can look at, look at for yourself. Now, this will only fix technical problems. There it is, that's the class right there, how to yep. critique your own photos. This is only going to help you, but, the, but that's what Eric was just talking about. Yep. Now, beyond that, I'm going to plug another thing that's not my class. 
Okay. The guy I'm teaching the London workshop with, and I've done all my yeah. workshops but one, because Eric and I did one this year together, and it was great. Eric is a great, great co-instructor, and we're going to do another one next year. That's how great he is. But the, the guy that I do well, them with you. is Mimo Madani. And Mimo, is, is, he's, a, he's a wonderful, wonderful photographer, but his eye for composition oh, yeah. is out of this world. And we... I think we're releasing his class. Is it this week? Yeah, yeah this, this week. This week we're releasing one of his classes for us. And he's done, he did classes before, like travel photography classes. But he came here to our studios. We went out on location and he did a phenomenal class. We saw pictures back from it. And we're like, how does he well, do this? Well, I mean, this? That's a, he can go to Tampa, Florida how does he and do get this? shots that you're like, I. I've lived here my whole life. I wouldn't even think it was there. Yeah, if you could come to Tampa and get shots, you can get shots anywhere. Hey, Stuart, Stu! Yes, Stu. Stuart Greenberg. Stu said, uh, that he, he put up the actual quote from Ansel Adams. 12 significant photos in any one year is good crop. Thank you, Stu. That's the yeah. exact quote. So if you can get one a month, that is a, that's Ansel Adams. He might be, and I could be wrong. He might. He up here. might know something about We're, this. Down. And that's where when we He's, get upset that we come back from a shoot and we only have one good shot, just remember, that's your one for the month. If Corey's asked a lot yeah. concerned, that's your one for the month. Man, if you can get that, that is great. Yeah. Hey, some nice comments, some some folks that are... Uh, yeah, uh, Mike's saying, uh, just attended the ultimate it's photography... Mark. It's Mark. Mike? Mark? Oh, I'm looking at the Mark ahead. Oh. Okay, well, we can oh, read sorry. that one, too. But hey, Mark sorry. Mark is saying, Hey there from Holly Springs, North Carolina. I love Cubby One. I've learned so much. Uh, keep it up. And then Mike is saying something Mike. about your uh, Ultimate Photography Crash Course. He's saying, It was awesome. Uh, it was really great meeting Scott. Can't wait uh, for your new Timeless Travel class. So, uh, checking that out. And then Jay saying, Hey, Jay. Uh, saying, So Yo, many great Jay. classes on uh, Kelby One. Cindy saying, I've learned so much. Since joining Kelby One a year ago, the classes are so amazing. I've seen huge improvements in my photography. Yeah, that's awesome, Cindy. That's what we're yeah. that's what we're really trying to do. Because I, I there are classes that I've watched where it changes the way you think about things or things that you do. Yep. You you can get better quick if you if you all of a sudden the light bulb goes on, right? Yeah. You, you watch a class, and that, that's why I think you're going to find with Mimo's class. Just following up on, on what Eric said, yeah, uh, is Watching some of those classes that where you just, it starts making you think and see in a different way. And ooh, they're going to show the, uh, uh, the yeah. official trailer for Mimo's class is coming up in, in the break. And it's break time anyway. Yeah. In fact, we're two minutes past break time. But we're going to take a break now. Check out Mimo's trailer. Mimo also, by the way, one of the greatest guys ever. Oh, he was yeah. on the show a few weeks ago. Oh, he's Seriously, great, Seriously, yeah. one of the greatest guys ever made. Yeah. Uh, check out the trailer. We'll see you guys in just a moment. We're going to dive a little deeper into this topic. Hello, everyone. My name is Mimo Meidani, a long exposure black and white photographer based in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Today, I'm going to take you through the journey, seven years journey of my photography experience. I will show you all about compositions, the secret I follow and the experience and the journey I went through. I've got the shortcut for you today. I found a way to practice and learn about compositions. We are going to talk about lines. We are talking about contrast. We're talking about frame within a frame. And we are going to talk about negative space to enhance your composition and enhance overall your photography. So please come and join me on my latest class exclusively at kelby1.com. Am I real or am I generated in Photoshop? Find out at this year's Photoshop World where I'll be speaking.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. hey -o. Hey, look at that Photoshop world. Coming hey, yeah, I like that. A lower, lower third kind yeah, of popping nice. in there. I don't know what that is. Anyway, nice. Magic. it's a bug. It's a bug. Bug. I like that. There's a bug on the screen? What? No, it's not that kind of bug. <laughs> don't they call that a bug? They do call that a bug. Okay, good. It's just like, I don't know. Maybe a, I don't know anymore. Look at it. Now the bug's flashing. The, bug's the flashing, flashing bug. bug. That's cool. Flashing bug. It's a lightning bug. All right, we got some shout outs real quick. We got some folks tuning yeah, in so from we got, all over. Uh, Philip uh, Columbus saying hello from Newport News, Virginia. We got Mike B saying hey from Chandler, Arizona. Uh, Chris saying hi from hot, uh, sunny and hot, well, Milwaukee. Probably not as hot as here. Uh, and then uh, Jeff Ryan saying hi from Alexandra, Virginia. Uh, John Austin saying hi from the UK, maybe. From maybe, Hexum? Maybe they could help you. Uh, Zach saying uh, hey from Colorado. Uh, uh, Lakes Rhino saying evening from the Lake District in the UK. Uh, Linda saying greetings from North Carolina. Uh, no, Rose saying hi all the way from Rose. Melbourne, Australia. So uh, well, welcome to the next day. She's in the future. Yeah, we haven't seen yeah. Rose in a while. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, Brenda saying hi from Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we got, got people joining us Rose all over the place. World. She came to Photoshop. Yeah, world. I remember I that. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> Wait, why does it say get Jason a per diem for New York City? I, I on think our that's. Screen. Why I think that? that's Christina's produced the notes that she put in there for herself. Hey, just make sure if, make you're, sure we listening, get, if you're listening. When we need to get need Jason a per, a per diem for New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I got. I got it. I got the yep. next one. All yep. right. So this is another way to help to see if your images are progressing, is evaluate their emotional impact. Now I will tell you what I mean by this emotional impact mm -hmm. and this will help you know. So I, I've judged, and, and Eric has as well, many, 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 many photo competitions just from competitions all over the world, uh, including the Guru Awards and award stuff that we've done. We did the Photoshop Awards and all these different, different awards we've done over the year and I've done for other people. And, but, but the eye-opening thing is when you do it in person. Today, a lot of the judging that I do for contests is done online, right? I, or the Worldwide Photo Walk is yeah. another one. I'll get images from around the world and they'll say, you know, pick your, and then they give the judges, you know, out, guidelines and outlines. And yeah. they will always assign. Now, they're, they're different for each contest, but one will say, we judge it this way, 65% on emotional yeah, impact, 35% like yeah. on whatever, 10% on, you know, whatever. They'll tell you what the criteria is. But emotional impact is always the one. Yeah. But to experience this and to understand emotional impact is to be in a room with a, a room full of 10 judges. Because here's the way it goes. You're sitting there watching the images, and the image comes up, and it's just quiet. And you know, they leave each image up for, I don't know, seven 10 seconds, seconds, something like that. Seven to 10 seconds, yeah. yeah. Click it, there's another image. Click it, and someone will eventually go, I kind of like that one. One of the judges will say, kind of like that. Or you might hear like a, hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, just a little, eh, you know. But I think what you're talking about is this next image is gonna come up. And then this one image comes up, and 10 people simultaneously, it, it's like this fast. Ooh, Ooh. the whole room, <laughs> everybody. That is an image with emotional impact. You, we don't have time to analyze, is the composition good? Did they make technical mistakes or anything like that? The image hits you. And you have to look at your own images and say, are the images I'm doing, and, we, and you see this on the grid all the time, and you guys do well, this too. This is the thing I struggle with the most, right? We here. bring up an image on the grid yeah. and, you're like, and we're like, yeah. yep, that's a bridge. That's your hometown. There's no emotional impact. Yeah. Right. There's just no emotional impact or like Peter Hurley says, it's a portrait and they're giving you nothing. They're just looking at the screen. They're not giving you anything that makes you drawn to the photo. And then you'll see a portrait where you're like, oh my gosh, that's so good. So you have to be able to ask yourself that question. I've got some more notes here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do, do, are your images, are they, are they evoking you know, that kind of response. Are they telling a compelling story? Is mm -hmm. the story that your photo is telling interesting? Or is it someone, you know, reading the newspaper? It's yeah. just like... Yeah, and I think a big thing here is like, if somebody looked at your image, do they immediately get it? 
I think the hardest thing as yes. photographers is they don't understand that there is this emotional, like we all have to have an emotional tie to the photo to make it a great photo. Like humanity as a, as a whole, right? Now there are little subgenres where you could say I could go, but if somebody looks at your photo, do they need a dissertation next to it to feel all the emotions of the photo? Or like you said, what happens in that room with all those judges is you just get hit with the emotion. And it just immediately- It sweeps the sweeps room. Sweeps the room, like you said, and it just goes boom. And we all understand it. We all get it. We don't need to. We don't need to understand the intent or how you felt or what you were trying to convey or message you were trying to do in the photo. It's just the photo itself created a large, strong emotional impact. Right. Like, take a look at the image on screen. I I used this uh, in my seminar here in Orlando a few weeks ago. I did a section on what to skip, and one thing was photos of nothing. This is a photo of nothing. Now, I took this photo, and, and then later you look at it, you're like, why did I take this stupid photo? But I had a whole section, so I did a section on travel photography, on shoot these things, and then I did don't shoot these things, and this was in that, that category. And I, I showed a bunch of different pictures that are just stupid. <laughs> you're right. Like, you're, like this is, right. this yeah. is a photo this is nothing of burger. nothing. Nothing burger. This is a, there's no emotion. <laughs> There's no nothing. Unless you're saying this there's a lot of cranes. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> if it's I mean, like this a, is, a this is another one. What the hell was I shooting here? <laughs> like, and I was took I these thinking? photos. I took them and I look at them later and I ask myself, what I, what was I what what, what am I philo car rental? Was that the subject? <laughs> you know, what the heck? It's I do, so true. Though. I took these and I'm taking the heat for them. But yes. But but you're right. You're right. As it's, as you what's progress, the story? What's as the... you progress, don't you think too? The other thing is the way to tell that you're getting better is you have less of these photos in your camera. Yes. If yes. you have less of these photos, like I can rewind you ten years, and I've got way too many of these photos. Yeah. This list. I'll go out. I was taken at least ten years. I'll ago. go out on a trip, and I might walk back with a hundred photos. I'm like, I'm okay with that. As long as there are 100 decent photos. I never get 100 photos from a trip. I, if I can get a good 30, mm -hmm. I'm thrilled. I do um, a lot of night photography, so, so I, we're waiting too long. Yeah, I, I, go, I go from 2,000 photos from a trip and then down to, I don't know how long you're going to show that picture. I'm already embarrassed enough. <laughs> no, right. Let's just keep that up there. No. Um, I, I start with like 2,000 photos, and then I get it down to like 150 that are in the running, and then I, I wind up actually finishing yeah. 30. You know, I talked to a guy at my conference. This is interesting, just side story. I talked to a guy and he was like, God, you know, the post-processing is killing me, you know? And he says, you know, I'll go on a trip and then I'll, 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 you know, take a whole vacation. I got thousands of photos and then I get it down to like 400. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to get those looking good. I'm like, don't process 400 photos. Like four. I said, Five. I said that 400, you went down from like, you know, 10,000 to 400, that 400 is step one. Like you got to get it down to like 30 or 40. And I said, if you have to process 30 or 40, that's 10% of 400. Mm -hmm. Like don't spend all that time making those photos look good, right? Get down to the really good ones. The ones you're not going to show people 400 of your photos, right? No one's going to sit through 400 of your photos. You know what I found is interesting? Like people that make a printed portfolio, right? When you hand somebody, if it's a long portfolio, I've seen so many times where people look at it and then they, they, they just stop. They get to yeah. a point and they stop and they close the book. Like yeah, they're, they're, they're they like, get tired, they get fatigued. Yeah, and they're like, I've seen enough of your photos. I get, I get it and I know where you are as a photographer. I don't need to see any more. And so people get that way. You're not gonna show 400. Who's gonna sit through 400 of your photos? Huh. So. Interesting. They'll sit. I don't know if they'll sit through 30, but they're not going to sit through I would 400. love to do a study at that. I know. That would be it's interesting. very interesting. It is yeah. interesting. Anyway, that was number with number three from, from our thing was yeah, yeah. evaluating the emotional impact. Yeah, we have, we have so much we could probably do three shows on this. But, but we're not uh, going to because we only have 15 minutes left. Yeah. So another one. Another one is, um, you know, we talked about um, tracking your technical mastery, right? Everybody gets, and this is, uh, I, I'm, I tend to be a highly nerdy technical person, right? I tend to, I, I'll admit it, right, no. to my fault. But no, I found you. my photography is better 
when I know my camera and I know what not to care about on my camera. That's true. That's, that is, but that's 100%. a big thing when you're when you're when you're trying to tell if you're getting better. If you're not concerned about the f-stop and the shutter speed and the ISO and the setting on the third screen that said HDR PQ, should I turn it on and off? Like, if you don't know that stuff, like I can see where that holds you back. But once you, I will tell you, my photography is better because I use like. 1% of what my camera will do, right? Yeah, well, you're not worried like, about well, lighting. You're not worried stuff. about that. Right. You know, it's so, if you go watch one of my classes on lighting, because I have a lot of classes on flash and studio lighting and stuff and like that. If you watch one, at a certain point, once I get the lights set up, I always say to the camera, now stop messing with the lights. You yep. got them set up. They're working. This isn't going to what was going to make the shot. It's your interaction with the person and all stop messing with the lights because it's very easy to get all it's the same thing in your camera you keep thinking well if i switch this one thing no no it's not going to make the shot it's really what yeah you're it, re of. it really is because that, and that's what i'm saying with this technical stuff is i found that if you're if you're getting too bogged in the technical it's probably because your photography isn't getting better yeah because if you let that technical out like you need to know the technical i teach tons of technical classes on kelpie one on every different camera manufacturer i know how sony menus nikon menus canon menus i know all the settings on it all that stuff but i use like one percent of it to actually make the photos I, I make and once you know that hey i don't need this or hey i might need this there's like a like a day i might need like like for example, I used last year um, stabilization mode three on my Canon. I used it once, and it's because I got into a setting where I knew I knew yeah. needed it. I just had it in the back of my mind if I knew when I would need it, but it's the only time I ever used it. Now, here's a better scenario. Mm -hmm. Do what I do. If I get to a point where I think there's something on my camera that I don't know how to do or I need to do, I literally just call Eric on my phone and say, Eric, what is that setting that does this thing? And he's like, oh, he either knows it off the top of his head or he goes, hang on. And he Googles it real quick or goes to the manual and says, yeah. okay, it's in this menu, it's in that menu, turn off this thing. So it does help to have a nerdy friend. Nerdy friends can be a great it help. It does, but on the other hand, that's what I say is, your photography will get better when the technical becomes less of your focus. Right, and he's Guaranteed. right, the 1% is all you need of your and I'm camera. And I'm a nerd who's like really into that stuff, he and is. I'm really into technical. When you realize that the technical does not matter, your photography will get better. All right, we're gonna do one more before we take a break. We have one more break to go before we get to that. Uh, the other one, and you're gonna know that this is a no-brainer, but it is seek a professional critique. Yes. Get a critique from some unbiased source that you trust to look at your work. Now, we do the grid and we do the, our monthly blind photo critiques. I think they're good because we are unbiased. We don't even know who you are. The name of the files is grid one, grid two, and grid three. Yeah. We don't know who you are. We give you an unbiased. We tell you, hey, we feel like this. I think that is, is, um, <clears throat> that is the, I think one of the, it is one of the best ways. And, and it, it's so important to get someone who's unbiased because yes. you have to be careful about going to people in your camera group and all because sometimes they can use this as a springboard to move themselves up and you down. A good critique moves you up. A good critique lets you go, okay, I know what I need to do next. I see what my problem is. I see what the path is. I see what the clear path is for me to making better photos. That's a good critique. Now. We, we try to do that on the grid. We don't say your photos are good or your photos are bad. If your photos are bad, we're like, you need to fix your lighting. You need to get rid of this junk on the side. That's, we try to give you, these are the things to do. And I will tell you that Eric and I have had great, great success with this. People are kind of mad at first sometimes, but they write us letter and send later and send us photos and they're like, look what I'm doing now. We're like, holy cow, how are you the person that's sending that other stuff? Mm -hmm. Like we've seen, and they'll yep. tell you, that was a, an eye-opening day. I was angry or upset at first, but then I realized you guys were right. I did the things that you did, and my photography changed overnight. We've had so many of those. It's a constant stream of them. Yeah, so, and it's it, the constant. The the constant in that is them telling me, everybody at my camera club, 
my people at, at my house, my, my, my family, they all tell me my photos are perfect and all that stuff. And when you get to what you just said, the people that won't give you the honest critique are the people fueling those critiques and that that's to your detriment. Yeah. Dale, uh, Dale's asking the question, do most photo contests let you watch the judging? I don't know of any photo contest that let you watch the judging. Now, today, most of the judging, like I said, is done by individuals. We're not in a big room. It's individuals and you're doing it on your own computer, which would be boring. But honestly, a lot of it is very boring in person too. Well, even when we've run them though, we've still done them, uh, even like during COVID and stuff, it was all uh, via Zoom, so we're all together. Yeah. So there's never a time when it's but like- I've never seen a contest that yeah. lets the public watch the judging. Not but I do once. agree with you, like the judging where it is independent and not in a group is um is interesting andrew's got a really yeah. great great uh thing here his question yeah he's saying and I, I yeah i read this one i struggle with the same thing uh when you go through your photos after a trip do you just delete the ones you don't like i struggle with deleting deleting photos even if uh the bad ones andrew i come from a film background where you never ever ever threw away the negatives i yeah. don't throw away any photos any of them Unless, like, it's a black frame, like the, my camera yeah, didn't terrible. fire, or yeah, it's a picture of my that. sneaker. Like, I don't throw away anything unless it's a complete disaster. So I would say, you know, drive space is so cheap, and I've got a big drive with tons of space and all. I don't throw away anything. Like, for example, I'm going to London when I come back. If I bring back 2,000 photos, which I won't, but if I bring back 2,000, when I'm done, I have 1,997 in the three I deleted that were of my foot. Uh, you know, because a lot of times you're walking your yeah, camera. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Shoot. So other than that, no, I, I don't delete them. I'm just looking. So I, I have a whole process. Oh, God, here we go again. If you watch my class called yeah. the SLIM system. Well, there's a reason which is why the there's a SLIM system and why there's yeah. all this stuff. It's called the Simpr Simplified Lightroom Image Management System, SLIM. Um, I take you through how I sort my images. I take you through the exact process. And in, nowhere in that process do I say, throw away your bad photos. Like, I don't, yeah. if, I, if I don't like it, we just move on, you know, and, and you'll see, you'll it see is, all that. It is a hard one though, Scott, because I know that as you start getting to where your image cat, cat, uh, catalogs grow and all that stuff. I still don't throw them away. I, I, no, I'm with you. I don't either. But there are times <laughs> where I'm like, you know what? I probably could just shave this down to like those I, hundred selects. I could, but nope. I, I actually think it would, the problem that I have is it would take me longer to delete them yes, and then reorganize and do all that, then it would, so I just, yes. like, that's why I There's do it. my slim system right there. That's my slim system. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are gonna take a short one. It's our last break of the day. We're gonna run over by, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. But uh, we, we still have some more, uh, some more things in our list and there's some good ones coming up, so don't go away. Of course, we also have prizes and uh, we're gonna judge, uh, we're gonna do some critiquing right now of the jib work done by Dobson, who I don't know if he's been adequately trained, but mm -hmm. that's pretty smooth. It's oh, going up. it was smooth it's going and then kind of, oh. Up. No, no, it's oh. going down. Oh, it's on, now oh, it's moving. Oh, he needs to no. spend some time oh, with Juan. No. He's no. the master. Oh, oh. Yeah. cut our heads off. Oh. 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 Now I know that a number of you out there are already using On One's plugins, using them with Lightroom, you're using them with Photoshop, and they're expanding your power. You know how I know you're using them? Because you keep sending me emails and you keep posting comments that say, how are you working in this into your workflow? Which plugins are you using? Which ones do you use first? Which ones do you use last? Where do they fit in? I'm gonna cover all that in a brand new course that I've done for you on Kelby One. The course is called how to use the on one plugins in your Photoshop and Lightroom workflow. It all is designed from the ground up to work together and it just works really, really well. There's so much neat stuff that you could be doing. And a lot of this stuff is AI powered, right? I hope to check out my brand new course. If you don't already have the on one plugins, if you're one of those people that slipped past the goalie and you don't have it, go to onone.com and you can download trial versions and see if you like it. You are gonna like it. You're gonna love it. All right, go catch my new class. We'll catch you next time.
I am a portrait and wedding photographer based in Valencia, Spain. I do mainly commercial and editorial photography and I retouch up to 100 photos a month. We shoot almost every day for all kinds of clients, such as commercial, beauty and fashion. And we retouch our work more often like every other day. I used to spend over one hour for one photo. If we want professional results, we must remove skin blemishes, do micro dodge and burn, highlight eyes, widen teeth, and even reduce wrinkles in clothes. And this can easily take me up to two hours of work for each photo. So when I saw that there's a plugin for Photoshop that helps you retouch quicker, I was eager to get my hands on it. I had many feedbacks about it and I found a lot of positive reviews, which made me to consider buying my first plugin. One of the challenges we have at the end of a session or wedding is to achieve an addition in our photograph that look natural. This is where retouch for me has become a game changer. I love the feature that you can pick how much effect it has on your photo and you can adjust it accordingly to your style. I saved a lot of time and always end up having amazing result with my work. I am extremely happy with the quality. Now I am more efficient and have more time to spare with my family. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. All right, well, we're, we're back. back. Hey, Christina, did anybody, anybody from London ever say? Well, I can't tell what guy was doing and he said he would fly there. Oh, don't, don't fly. fly there. It's not that great. Like, you'd have to... Yeah, yeah no. Now, no. Don't fly to London. So, with that, you know, how do you tell if you're getting the photography any better, right? <laughs> you're, you're raining me back in, yep. aren't you? Okay. But if you wanted to set a personal goal to meet Scott Kelby in London, that could be a different story. That's very... Because set one, the bar pretty one, low. One of the things that uh, we can do as photographers to really check our, you know, as our work progressing, is to actually, once you're doing the, you know, portfolios, critiques, all that stuff that we've been talking about, is setting goals for yourself. Setting some perfect personal goals, but make sure that they're measurable goals. Like something that you want to do, say in this next year, this is one of the things that um, I try to do at the beginning of the years or, or throughout the year, just to kind of like say, hey, I'm going to invest myself into getting better at this genre of photography or this style of photography, or just specifically, you could even go down to just on this shoot like have a purpose set a goal don't just go out and shoot like that's the one thing that will will you'll be able to tell if your photographer is getting better if you put the effort into planning and and having a measurable like goal at the end of your shoot and not just going out and just shooting around and hoping you get that magical shot yep that's great advice yeah next is join a photography community just be choosy about which community you join. There are really super friendly, helpful, awesome mm -hmm. communities that I can tell you if you're a Kelby One member and you're not a part of our community, our online community is phenomenal. The most helpful people in the world are in that community. Very, very helpful. And it's very, very easy very to get fun. to. All you gotta do is go into your membership, go into the side, hit that community button, it automatically logs you into the community. Yep, and there's just, you ask a question there, you'll get instant help, and you can also share images there, and people will give you, you know, uh, we very have critiques. kind critiques. We have, we have um, official critiques, and we yeah. have non-official critiques. Yep. We have people just looking for comments or suggestions. I was just, I'll put somebody out today with something. There you go. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a great community, and it is another way to get people bouncing off, you know, your ideas. You post a picture and hear, hear what the results are, hear what people say. And, and people, even if they, they see something that you should fix, I would say, certainly in our community, are very kind about it. Like, they're like, I like the photo, but you know, maybe next time you could try this. You know, they're, yep. they're not like, this sucks, you know? They're not like Simon on- uh, And that's what you'll Mer find Merrick's sometimes on uh, social media, you'll get kind of like the good and the bad and the ugly, you know? And that's where you get, to, if you, I, I think what this community thing is, getting in the photography community, getting in a plugged in with a photography community that you can rely on to give you great feedback. Yep. All right. All right. Next. Oh, this is a, this is a good one. Monitor audience engagement. Yes. This is a big one. Big. 
If you're wondering which one of your shots are the best, and you've posted over the years, and that's why posting to social media, letting people see your work is important, because you'll literally crowdsource what your best images are by just sharing. You're gonna see that certain images that you share just suddenly get like a lot of engagements, like a lot of people talking about it. I can actually tell topics that I post that like, oh, that topic's resonating because everybody really quickly started talking about it. Where other posts, you're kind of like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. So really monitoring your audience engagement. And this is a great thing at the end of the year. I know that like uh, people will do on their Instagram is they'll look back and see like, what were my top nine photos this year? Usually those top nine, if you're a photographer and you're only posting photos that are portfolio photos, real like photo photos, you'll get your top nine photos that people thought. Yeah, right? no, it's, it is actually very, it's, it's a wonderful way to see, especially if you want to sell your images later, Yes. which ones resonate with people. It's really good to see if you're getting a lot of likes and you can see the direction you're going in. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's really good. And I think a good point to that yes. is one thing, and that is it's usually your best indication, especially for prints, because you know who doesn't buy your prints? Other photographers. Other photographers, right? So social media and, and the audience you foster, right? They were gonna tell you, hey, this image I, that resonated with me, like this image was something that was important. And photo professional photographers might care about that thing that you think this image is better than that image, but the general population doesn't care because that image is the one that has the emotion. That's the one that has the impact. That's the one, and this one was just, it's a more photography friendly image. It has less noise or it has, it's sharp as anything. You know, all these terms that just yep. don't matter to people. I don't care. All right, next. Now this one, it, for some of you, for many of you watching will not be a big thing. You're gonna be like, eh. But for some people, this could be a game changer. It just depends. And that is to go out and try and experiment with different genres of photography. Take the stuff that you've already learned in your photography and use it in another. So for example, let's say that you are an aviation photographer and you go all of a sudden and try portraits. Understand that you know, if you're shooting aviation, you know a lot about photography and about your camera and stuff. You're gonna take all those things that you learned and you're gonna use them in the, uh, in portrait photography. But here's why it, this might be a good thing. And for some of you, you're like, I'm not gonna do portraits or whatever, but I just use that as an example. But the thing is this, what happens if you go do a portrait and you're like lights out at it? Like yeah. you're really, really you good at never it. Knew, and right? you realize, oh my gosh, I have a gift for yeah. this. I'm really good at this. You know, that, you know, that's how I wound up shooting football, right? I loved football, like I liked football, I'm a football guy. And now I'm playing the brand new Madden that was just released last week. Been playing it every night. Quite good, right? Well, you're now, gonna need to play that instead of watching. The I'm Bucks playing. Play. I'm playing the Buccaneers, and it's it's not been a great, you know. Yeah, I was gonna Baker say Baker Mayfield. It's probably, name's it's probably gonna be better to play Madden with the Bucks than if we watch the Bucks yeah, this year. Yeah, it's gonna be a rough year, I do believe, <laughs> for the Bucks. But anyway, um, but I don't. I've completely lost my point. But here's the thing. <laughs> If experimenting with different genres. What if you, so with football, that's how I got into yeah, football. football. A friend of mine said, hey, do you want to come shoot a game? He had passes to shoot the Florida State Seminoles. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm going up there anyway. Yeah, I'll shoot it. Because I was going up with my brother to see a game. And I thought, yeah, that'll be kind of cool. My brother will be in the stands. I'll be in the sideline. I'll give it a try. He goes, I got all the equipment. I'll loan you everything. I'll kind of get you going. And I loved it. I was in it. That was it. I was a football photographer. Like, it wasn't even anywhere on my radar but I did pretty good. I had a shot from that first game that was in my, in my portfolio for years. Like I had this one shot of, of, of a defender grabbing the jersey and, he's, and it's tight, it's really tight in there. And I love that shot. I always had people would see it go, oh, how did you get that? I'm like, I got lucky. But uh, anyway, if you try a different for a genre, you might see an improvement in that what you were shooting wasn't your thing. Yeah. Like you were shooting something, it was good, but you find out, oh my gosh, my thing is blank. And all this time I've been shooting flowers where my, you know, thing is portraits or whatever it is, but you won't know until you try it. So again, it may be a thing that impacts, you know, if how you're doing, or it may 
it may be irrelevant, but at least it's worth trying just to see, holy cow. Well, you know, and another thing know. that's interesting about experimenting with different genres is a lot of times you can bring over things from other genres into your genre yes. that people aren't even thinking about, right? That happened to me with, I mean, rocket photography. There's not like a lot of people doing rocket photography, there's but a there's a lot of people, including myself, that do low light night photography. And there was something that I noticed was happening up in the upper atmosphere. And I, I applied the Milky Way night photography theories and techniques to what I was seeing and ended up creating a genre in rocket photography where we're shooting these nebulas. I but it, nebula, you are but the it, nebula guy. But it comes from this practice of taking a different genre and taking what you're seeing over there and then applying it to another whole genre. Great comment from Linda here. Linda says, I would have never thought I'd be shooting sports when I started it, it wasn't even in the realm of my thoughts, but guess what I do most? Yep, and I love it. Yep. So that's that, that's what I'm talking about. Linda just nailed yeah. it right there. And then uh, Jesse's saying, uh, I do the annual uh, top nine on my social media that Eric was just yep. talking about. It's super interesting to see how your favorite shots might differ from your audience favorite. That is, that is my eye opener. Yep. Because I will see shots that I'm like, to me as a photographer, again, they're super sharp. They got so less noise. This clear subject, everything's everything's perfect to me, and it's like ah, eh, just falls flat. Some really great comments about the Kelby One community here from community members. For yeah, people that are part of that. We community. had uh, James saying that he, he checks the Kelby One community every day. Yep, and I see James in there every day. I see John's another one John. that I see there. John saying Cheeky Nando and Doc, which are our two uh, community moderators, are so helpful on the community. And uh, Stuart saying. The, the Kelby One community is, is uh, Kelby One has a wonderful community, and they also we also do weekly Zoom, so they actually have a community meetup as well. So they do over there uh, via Zoom, uh, which they have uh, dozens of members that are join on a weekly basis. Yeah. So. All right, we are going to real quickly uh, give our grid prize out, uh, our prize winners, and don't forget, and this is the most important thing that you may learn today. Jason needs his per diem for New York. <laughs> yeah. Can we make it still on the screen? It's still there. Yeah, I mean, we gotta get that. We We've gotta, gotta get, get Jason who's his per diem. The last thing you want trouble. is Jason starving in New York. Yes. Like, because I, I was with him. I wasn't gonna give him any money. I'm like, dude, if you don't have a per diem, you're not eating. Hey, yeah. you, you know where I took him for lunch in New York City? Uh, Carmine's. Carmine's on West oh, 44th, yep. baby. Yep. It Could've was fantastic. That one. fantastic. We had the chicken cal scallopini over angel hair with lemon butter you're, sauce. You're, the accent's coming and going there real quick. I know, and a Caesar salad. <laughs> we had a spinach, there's Caesar salad. I stopped liking Caesar salads years ago, except yeah. for theirs. Their Caesar salad is phenomenal, and they give you enough salad for 45 people. All right. Well, we got some prizes. Let's we do it, let's go. Prizes. So, uh, Bobby? is uh, winning the Photoshop for Digital Photographers book. That's B-O-B-B-I. And then uh, uh, Lorraine is winning uh, the Goosenecks, would be great. And uh, Barry, saying, uh, Barry Morris is saying he would love to win the V-flat. Uh, Chet Raskin is winning the On One, um, that was the No Noise. And then Mike B is winning the How, you, How Do I Do That in Photoshop ebook. And then Ryan W is winning the Retouch uh, for me app. So there you go. Just email us over at gridprize at kelpy1.com. We'll Grid verify your prize. information and then send you out Can your prize. Just make sure you um, send that before next or before this Friday. Before this Friday. So in a couple of days. Okay. Yes. I think we've exhausted it. Yes, I think we've exhausted it. We I'm did. exhausted. I don't know about you. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean the only one we had left on the list that we could touch on real quick would be to reflect uh, on your own personal satisfaction. So no. a, a big thing with that is to uh, look at your work and say like, are, are you being satisfied? Like, do you feel like you're being satisfied with your work, right? It's so. actually pronounced sassified. Yes, sassified, but yes. If you're, being, if you're enjoying your work and you think you're getting better and you think you're progressing, there's something there. So that there's something to, like, you've got to judge your own personal satisfaction. And it kind of goes back to what we said at the beginning. Eric said it when he talked about looking at your old photos and looking at your new yep. photos. Like looking at what you did a few years ago. It's very easy to do if you have a what? Portfolio. 
Next week <laughs> on The Grid, we have a very special guest, Serge Remilly. We'll be joining us next week for some Frenchy talk. Um, what else yep. we got going? And then you'll be off to London. Uh, Swing in London. If anybody's in London, I need help. Want to help Scott out? Help. Just leave us a comment. It could, it, 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 you, I promise you'll have fun. That's about all. It's fun. Look how high that jib is up. It's way up there. Well, I think they're trying to practice right now. I'm trying yeah, to see. A, that's a nice angle. I mean, it's actually it's moving pretty like that's consistent this right the, now. This, this is, is the Dobson's this is the work. best work so far. I think far. this is some of Dobson's best work. Wow, I'm lucky we have tall ceilings. Yeah. Well, thanks to everybody here. Thanks to our crew. Uh, thanks to Dobson for, oh, it's falling apart uh, now. Oh, it's falling oh. apart. Now we're, now we're up go in the rafters. Go over that way. Go over that way a bit. There you go. A little bit more. That's better. And then maybe now. Yeah, maybe just a hair yeah, more. Nope, nope. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nope. no, other way. Other way. There you go. Right there. Okay, just leave it there for a second. Stop messing with the jib. It's like the photography thing where you say, stop messing with the lights. Stop messing with the jib. It's right where it yep. should be. Thanks to our crew. Thanks to Dobson, who is earning his chops and learning his chops on the, on the uh, jib. Uh, thanks to our crew here. Thanks to Christina and company, all of our sponsors. Thanks to you all for watching. Uh, next Wednesday, where will I be, Eric? You'll be in London. Or you'll be on your way to London, right? Uh I'll be in London. You'll be in London. Next yeah. Wednesday, I'll be out shooting with everybody. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm leaving Sunday. That's I hope, right. you'll I hope be you're out. there with me on Thursday, because if yep. not, I need help in London. All right. We love you guys. Thanks very much. We'll catch you next time.